This is Matt for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and Empire Fight, so I'm delighted to be joined by legendary fighter, now trainer, Buddy McGurk. Buddy, talk to me, how things you here for Dan Aziz in the capital of France, in Paris? I know you're having some problems with luggage, but apart from that, how things? Well, everything is great. I mean, um, we are, I mean, we've done everything we needed to do. Yeah. Now we're here. Now it's up to him now to handle his business. How did the link up come with Dan Aziz? Um, I remember when I saw that he was, you know, linking up with yourself. I thought it was a bit sort of out of the blue, a bit of a random one. How did you two link up? He uh, hit me on Instagram. Is that how it started? An Instagram yeah. message? Yeah, he sent me an Instagram message and uh, we talked and I said, look, why don't you, let's get together for like a week, man, and train and see how you make out. And um, he, he uh, came down to California. We worked for like a, a week and he's like, hey, man, I really want to work with you. I said, no problem. And then uh, he came back home and he was getting ready for a fight. Then he called me, he says, I want you to come work the corner with my trainer. I said, you sure? I said, your trainer okay with it? He goes, yeah, he has no problem with it. So I flew out, got here the day before the fight, and uh, um, went to the work the fight. And after that, he's like, hey, man, I want to keep you on board. And here we are. Dan Aziz's career, he's done it the hard way. He's gone through all the belts, and he's obviously now fighting for the European title. What's impressed you about Dan um, since you started working with him? What's his sort of, not his biggest quality, but you know, the attributes that he needs to become champion? His, uh, his willing, willingness to learn. And when we work on something, he practices it every day. And when I'm, not, when I'm in the States and he's in, in, uh, in England, he'll videotape it and send it to me to show me what he's doing, how he's doing it, stuff like that. Do you look at him and think, he's got all the makings of a world champion because ultimately that's what these guys get into the game for. A European title's nice and it's one step at a time. But do you look at Dan and say, you know what, he has got what it takes to make it and get to that, get to the top? Without a doubt. I mean, I mean, like I say, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. But he has all the tools and everything that it takes to become a world champion. You've also, you've worked with Callum Smith. You're still working with Callum as well? Yes. Um, Sadly for Callum, um, his fight got pulled. He was supposed to be fighting right. in Liverpool. Um, he's another one. He's on the cusp of fighting, we believe, um, Better Biev. How excited are you to get, get your teeth stuck into a training camp, preparing for a guy like Arthur Better Biev, who is you know, undoubtedly one of the best in the world at the minute? I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I just uh, look at it as another day in the office, just a little harder task. You know what I mean? I mean... Uh, just getting ready and um, not, how can I put it, not looking past better, I can't pronounce his last name, better, better to be, better to be not, not looking past him, you know, just focus on what we got to do. We can't overthink it, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, if you overthink it and overdo it and work too hard, you can leave everything in the gym. So we just got to prepare like we normally do, just add a little extra, uh, you know, cross our T's and dot our I's a little bit much better. Now, Better Behave loves a war, and Callum, since he's jumped up in weight, and since he's been with yourself, we've seen Callum punch with spite. I think, I believe, one of his um, knockouts I was there for in, um, in Saudi Arabia, I believe it was, yeah. uh, the one before that as well. He's punching with mean intentions, like educated pressure. He's doing everything right. That could be an all-out war. That could be a war. I know trainers don't like saying it, but Better Behave comes for that, and if Callum lets his hands go... We're in for a treat, aren't we? Let's be honest. I mean, listen, there's going to be, there's not going to be no uh, uh, moving around like Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard. That's not <laughs> happening. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of um, who uh, gets that first home one punch in first. Yeah. You're also, you're training Jana Beck, um, world champion. I know you've only just started and you're going to say you're going to be going straight to see him after this fight. Um You've built up a nice little stable of fighters now. Is there room for any more? Oh, without, yes, for sure. I mean, uh, there's always room. You know what I mean? You just got to uh, pick and choose, you know what I mean? And, uh, um, and go from there, basically, you know. But uh, I enjoy helping these young men achieve their goals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, there's some fighters that, you know, um, that come to you and you know that their chances, well, any fighter's chance of becoming a champion is... Excuse me, it's all about timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you get some guys who uh, might be at that point where 
um, it's do or die. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, it's either I got to do it or if not, you know what I mean? And, you know, you take those guys and, and you, you uh, try, you know, you don't try to. You don't, that's the wrong word. You have to. You have to uh, rebuild the engine slowly so that they're not in that do or die situation. You know what I mean? And, uh, and help rebuild what they have. You know, because sometimes my guy come to you and he's like, no. I said, no, it's not really over for you, man. You know, you uh, you still got what it takes to take what they got. You just got to do it differently. You can't do it like you used to do it. But you got to do it a different way. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And sometimes that's the approach you got to take. What's the best thing you like about being a trainer for someone who achieved a lot in boxing to then cross over into being a trainer what what do you get out of it is it the satisfaction of seeing your fighter do well and sort of achieve things what what is it in being a trainer to see any, any guy that I work with and, and any fighter and and in that matter achieve their goal man you know because every kid has a dream every you know everybody has a dream when you're a kid I remember when I was a kid one you know dreaming about becoming the world champion I was 12 13 14 years old you know people laugh at you and a lot of people don't understand you know the ridicule a lot of fighters go through as an amateur people laugh at you like man please you champion forget about that's not gonna happen so when you get when you get guys that just get there if they even if they don't win it they got there not too many people can say they got there let alone win it so to say you got there is a big achievement within itself. Yeah. And a lot of people, to the outside person, to them it's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, he fought for the title, but he lost. Yeah, but guess what? He got there. Not too many people can say they got there. You know what I mean? Even when they had the best fighters in the 50s, 60s, 70s, some of the best fighters that could have been great, greater fighters never got that opportunity. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fighters, you know, there's a guy named Charlie Burley who beat everybody. Charlie Burley was consi is considered one of the greatest fighters ever, but he never, ever got a title fight. Wow. <laughs> what, era, what era did he fight in? Charlie, Charlie Burley fought in, I believe, the 40s and 50s. Nobody wanted to fight him. Sugar Ray Robinson, nobody wanted to fight Charlie Burley. And he fought everybody. Ezra Charles, Archie Moore, he fought everybody. He beat these guys. Yeah. He beat Ezra Charles. He beat Archie Moore. Never got a title fight. Bit of boxing history there for me <laughs> myself. Eh? Um, I want to come on to two fights. One that I believe looks like it was made last night. Another one where we've had a couple of press conferences and get your opinion as trainer and former fighter. Um, Javonte Davis, Ryan Garcia. Um, I'm so stoked this fight's actually been put on because it looked like another big fight that may not happen. And now boxing fans, finally we can go, big fight. This big fight is happening. What's your opinion on the fight? And, you know, it's a mega event. That's a fight that... Uh I would love to just go to, sit down, and enjoy it. Because it's going to be, it's definitely going to be a great fight. Who do you think comes up out on top? I got to go with Tank. You think Tank has enough in him to stop Ryan Garcia? Is it a case of Ryan's not been hit or dealt with anything like Tank before? Do you think that's where the, the edge lies? Somebody's getting knocked out. I don't know who, but somebody... Somebody's getting knocked out. I'm telling you, that fight, I cannot see that fight. The way these guys, both these young men, fight and the way they punch, I cannot see this fight going 12 rounds. Well, let's just be happy we're going to see it because a lot of fights that we want to see don't happen. Exactly. You know, your Crawford, your Spencer. We're going to be happy with that first. 100%. Right, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. It looks like last night we seem to have come to a bit of an agreement. Tyson put on his socials, 70-30 split, sounds fair to me. Usyk then responded and went... That's fine, let's do it. So we think that fight will happen next. What do you think of the matchup between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk? And obviously Tyson's a much bigger man, but what do you think of the fight? Well, to be honest, I, I can answer that question when it's a done deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, listen, he accepted the 30%, you know what I mean? Which shows that you got to respect him for that. Yeah. got to respect him. Because most guys were like, the hell with you. I'm the, I'm the champ just as well as you're the champ. You got to respect him for that. So uh, I just think it's going to be uh, it's another fight that I would just, that's another fight that I would pay to see. Yeah. I'd pay to, if I can get a ticket, I'll buy it on pay per view. Because that's going to be an interesting fight. Do you think we'll ever see Spence Crawford, in your opinion? Listen, it's 2023, it's got to happen, man. If it don't happen in 2023, it's not going to happen. If it doesn't happen this year, is it going to be a case of 
we get to the stage where like Floyd and Manny were both late thirties, and it's it, it was a huge fight, and I was you know privileged to be there in Vegas that week. But the fight wouldn't have been maybe what it was. I was at the Floyd Pacquiao fight, and round six, I got up and walked out. What? You walked yeah, I out? I walked out, man. Because it, it wasn't, it should have happened sooner. It should have happened sooner. So after the first couple of rounds, once you seen Floyd was dictating the pace. You knew where it's going. You knew where it was going. So you, so you know, and it was so crowded in Las Vegas. Yeah. And I left. And I still took me an hour to get a damn uh, a cab. You know what I mean? Because there was a lot of people who didn't go to the fight that was just in Vegas to be in Vegas. Yeah. And that's how crowded it was, man. So... I'm telling you, it was crazy in Las Vegas. I mean, I, I was there. I was there. I was there. It was. It was. I was like, oh my god. So, I just hope that in 2023 we get that fight. And anything after that, it's not going to be the same. I can't believe you left that fight. Waited <laughs> all them years, six round. You get up and go. I'm gone. I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna beat the traffic. And I got up and I walked out, man. Floyd, Floyd. Once Pacquiao started dancing his beat, it was the rap. Completely agree. Look, buddy, I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for giving us a bit of a preview on, uh, obviously, your fighter, Dan Aziz, who's fighting tonight in Paris. We look forward to catching up with you guys after the fight, and hopefully you have a bit more luck with your luggage, my brother. My pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. All right.